welcome everybody. This is a humorous history podcast, and we are known worldwide as the Goofy Historians. All right. Well, maybe not worldwide, but in India, I think. Today, we are going to begin for real this time. Our last video was kind of a rambling introduction, but we're going to begin our story of the Norman conquest of England. And in this video, we will examine the half century before 1066. This was a tumultuous time on both sides of the channel. We're going to definitely take a look at some of the characters and dissect their personality traits and share some of the stories about the notable characters. Um, specifically, we're going to talk about Queen Emma, Emma Everready, and both of her husbands, Ethelred the Unready and Canute the Amazingly Ready. <laughs> and we're going to... Canute the Cute. <laughs> we're going to... Um, yeah, but that's interesting because uh, Emma was Queen of England twice. Everybody knows that Eleanor of Aquitaine was Queen of England twice, but um, Emma did it like centuries before Eleanor. So anyway, let's let's get started here. It's the Norman and Viking history is is alive and well today. They're always finding new hordes of silver. They found one just recently. This is a true story. I got a picture of it. And um, it was a hoard that is thought to be from uh, Canute's dad, the guy who invented wireless communication, Mr. Bluetooth. Um, so maybe I can find <laughs> yeah. a picture. That was his grandfather. <laughs> that was his, Canute's grandfather was Bluetooth? That's so funny because... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. His father was the uh, fork beard guy. Swain Fortbeard. That is weird. That they, it, it, doesn't matter. It, it is funny that the, that name stuck through all these. There's so much um, prevalence now from Viking lore. Anyway, so Emma was Queen of Normandy, uh, Queen Normandy, Queen and of England twice. God, let's see if I can say that again. Anyway. Um, she was born in 984 and died in 1052 at 68 years old. Now, she was so great that she wrote a book about herself. What's it called? It's called Encomium Imanme. Do you have a copy of that, Joseph? Emma. Emma. That's Latin for in praise of Emma. She wasn't shy. Yeah. You know, and and uh, uh, actually, I mean, she had it commissioned. She had it commissioned, but actually, I mean, she wrote it. You can tell. I mean, it's just in praise of Emma. She wasn't shy, and she was she was very fond of herself. She was like the greatest queen England ever had, and I don't think they appreciated. it. And also, you got to remember, she wasn't only queen of England. She was queen of Denmark. She was queen of Norway, and she was queen of Sweden. She was queen of four different countries besides being the Duchess of Normandy. So... It, I mean, but she didn't keep it, them all going, but but she, is it, she was an amazing woman. Yeah. Is it true that she was, in fact, a witch? Yeah, we can we can we can get to that. Suppose well, that's what the bishop said. I mean, so yeah, when uh, so when Alfred the Baker right beat off Ragnar the Viking right, the Vikings still owned three quarters of England, right? But his son Edmund and his son Ethelstead, you know, by the time his grandson, the Anglo-Saxons had reconquered all of England, right? And when it gets to, so he had like two really good generations, right? We were beaten, beaten about the Vikings. And at the end of it, Ethelstead, they left, right? So there was this guy called, um, Edgar the Peaceful, right? Because he was, not that he was peaceful, it's just that the Vikings had left, right? So he, there was a whole reign of Edgar the Peaceful where there was no Vikings, there was no war, right? Which is rare at that time. So basically they call him the Peaceful and he had, but he was peaceful just because the country happened to be peaceful, not that he was peaceful. But he had, he had an interesting love affairs. Right? One of his 
wives was a nun that he captured from a nunnery, right? And that was his first son, right? And who they call Edmund the Martyr, right? He wasn't really a martyr. He like he died in a bar fight, right? I don't know how you turn that into a martyr, right? But and there was another son who missed his coronation because he was fell asleep the night. He you know he was partying the night before, and he was with two prostitutes and their mothers, and he, he missed the coronation, and then he died. So then he had another son. Uh, Ethelred the Unready, right? So Ethelred the Unready, his mother, according to the bishops, and it's written down and documented. I don't know, I don't know if you can believe your primary sources, but apparently she was a witch who could turn herself into a horse. And she used to prance around in the fields exposing herself to all the other horses. <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> So so Ethelred, right, was so unready because he's so screwed up, right? He's like totally neurotic. His, his, his mother is a witch who can turn herself into a horse, right? And she used to always hit him with candlesticks, right? And his brother, the martyr, he just became a martyr just because everybody hated Ethelred so much. And his stepmother was a nun. Uh, and apparently they even said his mother killed Edmund the martyr because she wanted her son to be uh, king and he so didn't want to be king because he was so unready he knew he was unready that she used to be <laughs> candlesticks and so he was neurotic and he was always afraid of candlesticks for the rest of his life well that would be Which really difficult that was the only light they had yeah that's the, the only light there. that's the only light that they had <laughs> to be scared of candlesticks so, yeah. in the first millennium was pretty tough but I gotta say that um, so in the in the half century um before the normans conquested the hell out of england the territory on both sides of the channel was this never ending conflict there was ambitious nobles who were either avenging previous battles or they were fighting for the crown that they thought belonged to them the entire period was like this murderous 10th century reality tv show full of nutty characters and great nicknames it's like the real normans of 1066 because if you just take out all the if you take all the drama and put it into 50 years it, it's all right there the um it's it's insane the the we have to show a family tree of of how this all went down on both sides of the channel yeah yeah, yeah. We, 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 can, we can put that in it's amazing how because it's it's basically England between to, between you know the the Vikings and the English and then Denmark's Norway the Scandinavians and then France which was a combination of Norman France and Parisian France and they all somehow ended <laughs> ended up in England and then which originally got to the Hundred Years' War where the English were fighting the French, right? Because it, 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 there was so much convolution going on. But yeah, so so to get back to, to Ethel Red the Unready, so it was really dire times. But the only people who had any sense of humor were the chroniclers who thought these names up, right? I mean, it, it was it was pretty, pretty funny. You know, Ethel Red the Unready. Um, but he married somebody. Oh, so so right. So as soon as he became king, the <laughs> son ready, and the Vikings decided to show up again, right? They were gone for all of Edgar's reign. Ethelred shows up, and the Vikings go, well, let's go back, right? So they there was this guy called Thor the Giant or something comes, and he's wreaking havoc on him. And, and then Ethelred gets all pissed off at him. And he so the Danes, the original Vikings that, that came from the first wave, right? They've all settled down. They don't build ships anymore. They, if they ever knew how to build ships, right? They're like farmers and stuff. They, they become part of the English country. They become English, right? But he goes and kills them, right? Because he's pissed at Thor and the Giant. Thor and the Giant or someone. Thor and the Big. He kills all these things, which, of course, really pisses off the Danes, right? And that's when, because I think this, this guy called 
Forkbeard's Wayne Forkbeard, whose father was Bluetooth, right? Oh, he's funny because this is a funny story. I got to get to say this one because he converts to Christianity, right? And because a monk was trying to preach to him, saying he's praying to God, praying to demons, right? So he makes this priest hold hot bars and walk across coals or something, and he does, and he's not burnt, right? It's like a miracle. So Swain Booth, Swain, Swain Fortbeard goes, that's, that's too fucking, I mean, that, that, that's too cool. That's just way too cool. I'm, I'm going with Jesus, right? So he converts to Jesus, Jesus, Christianity, just on that alone. So he doesn't know the nuances of Christianity, right? And they baptize him, and he says, this is so cool. I, I love this Christianity stuff. So he digs up his father with Bluetooth, right? And, you know, the Bluetooth digs up his father and converts him to Christianity and baptizes his dead father. So there you go. Well, that's the way to really, do it. You gotta really be didn't. you gotta be <laughs> thorough. You gotta be thorough. So well, you know that, he, that that's he a dragged great his, he dragged his poor father. He dragged his poor father out of Valhalla, right? Who was he's like partying in Valhalla. And all of a sudden his poor father is in church being baptized and he's already he's like he's being washed away. So, but you know what? I want to say something. About, his... I want to say something about that real quick. So I heard that story too, and the the hot coals and the holding the hot iron. That's a great parlor trick, um, and it worked beautifully. But you know what? There, there's still people that can do that today. There are fire walkers that can walk across hot coals, yeah, and uh, not get burned. And you know that's that's a that's an amazing way to convert. Uh, People just like oh, we're, our, our God is magical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead. <laughs> magical God. Yeah, let's see if Thor do that. But the fact that Ethelred the Unready was killing these Danes in England who have been there, settled there, they've been there for a hundred years. And apparently, Swain's sister was there visiting relatives, and she got killed. So, um, this is where it where it all happens because. Forkbeard is pissed, Christianity or not, he goes over there and he wreaks havoc on the English, right? And at this time, Ethelred had married a previous woman, and they, he had like six kids already, right? And she had died. And also, all of a sudden, all these Vikings are, are, are taking over his country again. So he says what he needs to do is to get another Viking on his side. Right. So he goes down to Normandy, which is like Vikings that can speak French. And uh, Ethelred can speak French. So he, he goes down and marries a, like a 12-year-old girl, which is Emma, and brings who, who is the aunt of William the Conqueror. This is where it all gets tied in, right? right. So he marries the aunt of, of William the Conqueror. He brings her to England. And he has thinking that he's going to get this the the Normans to help him fight the Danes, right? And they do, right? For a while, it goes okay. Uh, and he actually has, and apparently Emma hates him. He's just disgusted by this because he's she's like twelve and he's like thirty eight by this time. He thinks he's disgusting, but she stays with him for ten years. They have two kids, right? And one of them is Edward the Confessor, right? But these two kids that she has by him. Uh, Ethelred already has six full-grown kids, right? So it's not like these guys are in line for the throne or anything. But the Swain Forkbeard is still fighting, and and then they all have to leave. Or maybe it's Canute by this time. Canute comes. His father Swainbeard dies after he actually Forkbeard becomes a king, but only for a year. He dies, and then Canute comes. And at that point, Ethelred already moves in with his relatives, his father-in-law, in Normandy, right? Yeah. So he's like sleeping on the couch at his father-in-law's house with his five kids from his first marriage, plus his two kids from Emma. And they stay there for like the whole royal family is living in Normandy, right? Uh, it's like, and, then, um, and then he dies. He dies in Normandy. And and that, that that's the end of Ethelred the Unready sleeping on the couch of his father-in-law. 
Yeah, it's pretty. So, pretty so one of one of Emma's kids, because she, she had two kids before um, she gets married to um, what? No, she, she had kids before she got married to Canute. But anyway, she kind of like abandons those kids later in Normandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. but she, one of those, those are the kids, two kids she Yeah, well, yeah. one of those. Yes, kids those are the two kids she abandoned in Normandy. Right. Right. So, so the one that becomes is, Edward the Confessor. Is, uh, is the youngest. Is the youngest. And he is an amazing guy because you know what? The coronations that are going on this weekend, they're king, they're crowning um King Charles in the UK at the coronation. The the stuff during that coronation, a lot of it has goes all the way back to Edward the Confessor when when he was coronated. Yeah, yeah. Pious, yeah. I think, yeah, I think I think I think I think. 85% of the English think that shit's going to be canceled, right? It's like, come on, let's get, it's, we don't need it. But the funny part, which is interesting, is Canute, Fortbeard's father, his father is dead, Fortbeard's dad, who's the, the, his grandfather, Bluetooth. So Canute comes and he, he becomes the king of England, right? And, and Emma is in Normandy with her kids and her stepkids, right? But she makes the move. She calls up Canute, right? Makes arrangements on the phone. She says, why don't you marry me? Because I'm still young. And I know what's going on, right? I, I, I've been, oh, because when she was with Ethelred, right? Whenever there was a proclamation or a law or anything going on, her name was first on the list. Her was her first signature above the bishops, even the Bishop of Canterbury, right? So... She was actively involved in running the company more so than Ethelred the Unready. So she was she was like the act, she was actually a queen running the place. And so she calls up Canute and says, you know, you, you've taken over from your father, you're like 21. I'm like 36 now, right? I've been running this country for 20 years. Let me be your queen and I'll help you run the country. Well, you and, know what? They, says, yes. they they met on an online dating site. <laughs> It was called for royalty. Royalty mingle <laughs> mingles. It's, it was a, like a, a royalty Tinder for 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 single noble people. Right. That that so, is wild so, though. So that uh, Canute marries Emma. Yeah. So now Emma's yeah. So he of England had, again. Right. So he's um, oh so Eden. I mean uh, Alfred the Unready. No, Ethelred the Unready, right? His first wife was Alpha Alfkapu or something. And um when he marries Emma, he changes her name to Alfkapu. Right. And she goes, No, I'm not going by Alfkapu. It's just not gonna happen. But the reason the reason why she didn't want to the reason why she didn't want to change that name, her name is because Canute actually had another wife by that same name. It was a common name. Yeah, Canute's Canute has another wife whose yeah. name is Al Kafu. So so when she marries Canute, Canute is already married because even though he's Christian, you know, they've never actually read the Bible or anything, right? They just, you know, to, took it mainly for the ceremony. So now she's married to Canute and she runs the country with Canute for like what another 10 years or something. And she has two children by the new or a, a daughter and a son so now there's the five kids by the original Al, the unready's original wife Al Kapu, plus the two kids by emma and elta red the unready and now two more kids by emma and Camille, right so this poor like edward the confessor like he was so far down in the totem pole that he, he wanted to be a scholar, right? That's all he wanted to do. He just wanted to like go and read books, you know, and study Latin. He was had no interest in politics at all. That's what um, Alfred the Great said. That's what Alfred the Great was wanted to do. That it's the same thing as, as Alfred the Great. Only this guy wasn't great. He was the, he was a confessor, right? So Emma, so Emma is now Queen of England again, and now she's not only Queen of England. She's queen of Denmark. She's queen of Norway, and she's queen of Sweden. And 
her son, what was her son name? By uh, I don't know. I didn't write it down. Uh, yeah, well, shoot. So she has a probably Edmund. She has, a, she, has, she, has, she has one is like she has two sons by Canute. One of them dies, and uh, the other one is Canute makes Canute to Denmark. So huh? <laughs> there was one of them. Oh, it was like Haka Canute. Haka Canute, yeah. It was Haka Canute, yeah. So it's Haka Canute is the son of Emma and um, Canute. Canute. Right? And Canute sends him to Denmark, and he has another son called Swain that he moves to Norway. And there's a rebellion in Norway, and Swain ends up hanging out with his stepbrother Canute, and they're like really getting along well in Denmark. And there's another, oh, 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 and then, then there's Harefoot. Right, Harold Her Harefoot is the one who's in England with Canute when he dies, when Canute dies. Right, so since the other two are in Denmark, Harefoot takes over England as the king of England, and Emma's go, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm not queen anymore. Right, so she tries to get her to. Then she remembers that she has all these kids she left in Norway. I mean, in, in, in Normandy, right? So she like, we got to get them back. <laughs> I need someone to be, because like, she really, really, really loves being queen, right? So she gets one of her sons out, and he gets blinded or something in some castle somewhere. But she, but then... Uh, the, the other one's what, in Constantinople uh, or something. Barefoot ends up getting killed, and, 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 and then the other, uh, off the canoe comes, he becomes king. Right, so now he's Hoppe Canute is king of England, and Emma's back in power. Right, she's 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 back. Right? She's she's running things again because Hoppe Canute doesn't know what to do, and Hoppe Canute goes, but he has no kid. He's just hanging out and partying, just like the third generation of kings that have no heirs. Right, and so he says, well, Emma says, let's go get Edward the Confessor. Let's go get Edward from, and they go down to Edward, and they said, "You can come up and live with uh, uh, Arthur Canute in England and be ready to be heir of the throne." And Edward the Confessor is going, "Well, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you can't, you can't do this to me now, because by this time, all of his other sons from his first wife are gone. Ironside, who was like a sub king for a while, and and all the other, they're all gone." The one, well, one was blinded and he died. So all that's left of Ethelred the Unready is this poor dude, Edward the Confessor, right? And so at that point, Emma, so Hoth the Canute dies because he's, he's, he's partying too much. And then Edward the Confessor shows up and he's like 38, right? He's been, he's been in Normandy. For 37 years, he doesn't speak English, you know, he just knows Latin and French. And, he, and Emma goes, well, you're king, but don't worry about it. I'm going to run things, right? And he goes, no, you're not. You, you, you like abandoned me, right, for 35 years in Normandy. And he sent her off to a nunnery. And, and he ran, he was going to run the country by himself. But it turned out there was the, he, he didn't know how to run a country country right all he wanted to do is pray and go to the confessional and diddle around in the confessional and the confessions of people he was a very holy person so he didn't know how to run a country like england he was so, so there was he was guy, wait, oh, was it he didn't he become a saint or am i getting well he, yeah it was pretty easy to become a saint back then yeah and i think he, he didn't he have to do a miracle i know i think he had to do a miracle yeah, you have to do a miracle, but then you know, his the one, uh, uh, I guess becoming even, king, even Bluetooth, I think, became a saint. I becoming mean, saints were dime a dozen back then. I think he just had to pay enough money, and people go, Oh my god, my headache's gone. Well, the thing is, <laughs> well, Edward, the, be... Edward the Confessor's um, chances of becoming king was a miracle in itself. That was a miracle because no one, no one thought. Well, you know, things were pretty rough because he had so many people ahead of him on the line, but he ended up with the. But it was, it was the uh, Godwinson 
who actually ran the place. And Godwinson was, wasn't in the royal line, but he got Edward the Confessor to marry his daughter. So it was Harold Godwinson that married the daughter of Edward the Confessor, even though they didn't have any kids. And apparently it was never even consummated. But because of that, that was Harold's connection to the throne. So when Edward the Confessor died, Harold Godwinson, whose daughter married the Confessor, he says, well, I'm king because I have this connection. But uh, the other connection was William the Conqueror, because he was he was he was the uncle of Emma, right? Yeah. So that gives him a connection to the throne. And the other one was uh, Swain. He didn't have any kids, and there was a ruler in Norway who he was friends with, who grew up with, went boarding school with or something. And he said, "Look, neither of us have kids, right? Whoever dies first, the other one will inherit everything." So when he went to England and he died, nor the guy, the king in Norway goes, well, I'm claiming my, my I, I, I got that bid on England. So that was Harold. So he has a claim on England from this little side contract. And then there's Harold Godwinson and there's William the Conqueror. And those are the three people who come to blows on 1066. That's a, that's, that's a where brilliant. We should, we should end it. That's a brilliant summary. So so those three characters, in a way, they all had legitimate right to the throne. Um, I think that Williams was was just as strong as um, the the yeah. the Herald from Wessex as opposed to the Herald from scandinavia but you know what i was wondering yeah. did the only thing about that the, the, the harold godwinson he was actually running the country though for about 20 years yeah i mean he was uh, edgar didn't edgar the, the confessor dude didn't do anything he so harold at least through his tie of his daughter was actually running the place so you know i and, think he should have given given that the and he had he, he was had he was rights. like a the Godwinsons were like the Rockefellers for about four or five generations. They just had more money than anybody all the way up until the uh, Norman invasion. Well, so the, really, the conquest, yeah, 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 before the conquest. And I really think that's a that's a good place to start uh, to stop actually, because next time we can actually talk about the battle because all the stuff that I really want to talk about the tapestry the the change of the language all of that happens after 1066 so my only um question for the end of this podcast is the timing was a little too perfect um I, i'm wondering if because what happened was um harold from wessex gets crowned king um and and um william the conqueror is like uh, uh, uh no you don't and then before william has time to launch his invasion Harold from Scandinavia launches his invasion it was like such perfect timing for William because it turns out that um you know Harold had to go all the way to northern England to go fight the other Harold so he was exhausted too exhausted to fight William so maybe that's um maybe he had spies um he that yeah, maybe sure that's that spies all over. But we can talk about the strategy of that. Maybe he would have been better to let the William the Conqueror take Southern England and then, like they always do, Wessex, right? Yeah. We we'll divide it between Wessex and Northern England, and then we'll figure that out later. Because when he went and yeah, tried to fight, it was right after fighting Harold at the the Melvian Bridge or wherever that is. You know, it was, and he only, and he could get his. He could get his force down there, but he didn't have the, all of his force. He didn't have any archers, right? His whole force didn't get down there. So it was a one-sided thing. Um, but William won. And then, I mean, the whole point of that existential event, right? If Harold from Norway won, England would have been part of Scandinavia there, right? We would have all been speaking Norwegian or, you know, Swedish, you know, a, a, a Nordic language, or if Harold had won, it would have been England on its own. But with William winning, 
1066, we become, we, <laughs> England becomes a part of Europe, right? It becomes part of, you get the Hundred Years' War, you get, you know, England, France, and Germany. It, it becomes focused on that south, west, instead of, you know, east and north to Norway. So it was, it was a pretty good, it was a pretty big uh, difference. Well, I think, I, I think that there's, um, that there's a lot to say, you know, what happened after the Norman conquest, but the, um, the great thing that I think we'll talk about more in the next video, probably is that English now has 240,000 words for us to play with. That's not including all the words that Shakespeare freaking made up centuries later. So in comparison, Spanish has 140,000 words. So we have like an extra 100,000 words that were derived from French, and they all sound really cool. Would you rather meet somebody or would you rather have an encounter? Would you rather eat or would you rather or dine? Right. All the French words sound more. Would you rather talk? Would you rather talk or have a conversation? Conversation. Right. Right. <laughs> would you bet? Would you rather so, be yeah, a so baker between... or a tailor? Yeah, it goes on and on and on. But anyway, so, um, yeah, th there's a lot of good and bad. Um, the, the the reason I'm not saying English is better than Spanish because we have a hundred thousand words you the spanish would say that um well the reason you have an extra hundred thousand words is because you were conquered by the french um and spanish and the spanish weren't although yeah, yeah. didn't napoleon but, try but, to do yeah that? yeah people don't think but spanish was conquered by the arabs so spanish has a lot of arab word words in it any any spanish word that starts with al comes from Arabic, right? So, but you know, they didn't they they, they didn't stay by, by 1492 the Arabs were gone, where you know the French really never did leave England. Um, and I think that's the whole point is that when the French Normans, which were the Vikings who speak French, the whole point is that the Vikings were so adaptable, right? They just mutated and became whatever it was necessary for them to become in order to um, to flourish. Because remember, the Normans were not only in England, they were in Italy. They were in the Near East. They were in Rush, the Rus, right, are, 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 are Vikings. So, uh, and that's that's probably the Viking blood that got into the English in the 17 and 1800s, where they thought they had to go out and civilize the world. Um, well, well, they did a pretty good job. At that. That. They, they did a pretty good job at that. Stay tuned. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, hit subscribe. We're uh, out of time for this one, but stay tuned uh, for the next one. We'll actually talk about the Battle of Hastings. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>